best practices, database design. I love getting the database design right the first time. Things and stuff. You know, spend a lot of time with that area. Other than a family man, uh, every baby in the house, couple months old. Um, so four boys now. And love being outdoors, fishing, hiking, camping, whatever. Um, always enjoy going to see a drive up the canyon or, you know, like the river or something. Always enjoy being outside. Uh, this is a little quick, this kind of state of PHP, where we're at right now. Uh, PHP 5.3.29 is into the line, it's been released. Using PHP 5.3, you should really consider upgrading. Um, it's been out for quite a while. Uh, the last release was just last month for PHP 5.3. PHP 5.4.42 was released in August, uh, just a few days ago, last week or last month. It says aging. Raise my hands. How many of you are using uh, PHP 5.3? We have 5.4, PHP 5.5, PHP 5.6 in one. Not yet. Thank you. <laughs> wait, a, wait a couple little subversion pieces there. And then, and then um, so the whole bit here is kind of get you familiar with PHP 5.6, some of the some of the changes they made, some of the features, some of the deprecated and incompatible issues. Uh, PHP 5.7 is under development. PHP 7. Um, so PHP 6 is the Unicode. Unicode did a bunch of features they wanted to, to deploy or release with it. This branch can never really have a production release. So the next PHP version would be PHP 7. Uh, there was an internal vote. Uh, it was decided, it was like two thirds, said mm -hmm. they want to go with 7 instead of 6, so they decided to go with 7. So the next major version of, the next version of PHP will be PHP 7. Uh, I haven't heard a timeline list come out. Anybody know? I think they're hoping for it's been a year. We just have like the first like public betas. You know, just uh, if you're watching the uh, if you're watching the uh, QA dot PHP dot net, they will, you can see when they're doing some testing builds on it and stuff. You can see there's at least a couple thousand tests that have been run for PHP seven. So it's definitely an interactive development. I know they have a lot of uh, items to figure. They're focusing on performance. They were saying some uh, WordPress benchmarks were 100 percent increase in performance. And it's basically twice as fast, which is pretty awesome. Especially so you have other people are using PHP. Uh, it's going to be more compact data structures, which will be easier to get, just in time compilers. Um, they've improved the variable syntax. As uh, reading the discussions about this, um, it kind of goes into like how you can't do like a static, static, static call, or a variable, variable, to static. There's just some weird things that PHP can't do that they fixed and corrected. Um, there's a lot of different points that are made. If you're interested, go look it up. Google uh, PHP 7 variable syntax. You can find some blogs and some information about it. Uh, big uh, requests for it and stuff. So, um, there's a the link if you want to go uh, check that out. Uh, just to ex explain the environment here that's being used, uh, using Vagrant with two different machines, except for Puppet. I'm out of here. <laughs> He's a salt guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, one is on PHP 5.5.8. The other one's on PHP 5.6. That's the only difference between the environments. Um, automatic code sync going. Um, out with the old. We're going to start with some incompatibilities. So these are things if you're using it, you're going to want to change it. We're going to have to PHP 5.7. Because you will get failures, hard failures. Um, array keys won't be over. This was kind of a, a kind of a weird edge case. Uh, I, I was trying to think if I'd ever seen it or not. Um, essentially, the the, uh, the way it goes is if you have a constant, if you have it defined as a one down here, it works. But if you had it as a constant, you reference the constant as a key, then it was overwriting. Did we do about that? Ever mm -hmm. seen that one? That's kind of a weird one. I was like. What? I don't think I'd ever do that. <laughs> I said it only happened with constants. We had to try it out. Um, so here's the markup of it. There you see it's getting overwritten. And on this one, it's, it's doing it correctly. Uh, so the top is uh, this is 5.5, five, this is 5.6. Five, That's crazy. Cool. Also, I, it's probably almost it's a, considered a bug, but. Yeah, it's one you've stumbled on and probably be bugged me. I'm worried about it. Is 
kind of very specific one. I don't know if I've ever come across that these just cause a bug to some sort of story. So I think I've never figured it out. To be fair, you really shouldn't be mixing dictionary arrays. Yeah, yeah. This is PHP. You can do anything in the world possible. Anything is possible. PHP. Um, some of the old, other old things, I won't demo with these items, but uh, uh, JSON decode strictness dealt with if you had a true, false, or null camel case, there was a camel case, but then it wasn't all lower case. It was failing, it was just a strictness issue. Um, stream wrappers, uh, there's, there's a bunch of uh, updates for SSL and TLS. Uh, quite a few updates. GMP, uh, if you go, the resources are now library, or sorry, resources are objects. Yeah, the different data types there. We'll get into why that is. We'll see why how we see that being used here and some of the new features that they have. Um, encrypt fun functions. If you, uh, they require a valid key, so before you could use a bad key or, or an initialization, initialization vectors if, if applicable. Um, <coughs> deprecated. So these are you know, the code will still work, but you could deprecate it that notice in your ear log. Calling a me method from an incompatible to context. It's kind of funny, so we came across one of these today, the code base. Um, so it, it, this is the classic, you have a, a static method being called with the, uh, the arrow, and a non-static being called with the, something called. Um, so if you call the uh, static methods, if you call the non-static method normally, so see you get the uh, non-static method, it's not be called statically. We see that one a lot. It's not actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So if you have those in your code, we're going to clean them up. Uh, KP57 will tell you where we're at. I thought 5.6 uh, uh, actually. 5.5. Or 5.5, yeah. 5.5. Because we don't have that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's on the, this is the list from uh, KP57's website. It's on the list as we know in 5.6. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was if you had strict standards on it, but it was like, oh, um, maybe, now it's not strict. Yeah, 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 now it's not strict. That must be what it is. Um, it'll just be storm notifies me. Um, and I do use page space, so maybe I'll find out the way. That's why I always catch it, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you're testing someone else's code, like, oh, hey. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a helpful one, I think. Yeah, that's, it's a honest state that's easy to make. Um, HTTP raw post data, if you're using that, um, you can still see it. You can still enable it through one of the PHP Admin features, but uh, they want you to start using PHP input. Uh, and they also made PHP input reusable, so you can use it multiple times. So see over here in that example, we've got uh, it being used multiple times. Um, undefined variable HTTP raw post data. Um, that's a really easy one to fix. Just go flip out your, your references to it. Luckily, that's, so that's a really easy one to change. I don't think I use it terribly often. I think there's a couple of libraries I've used seen it with the SL Core services and stuff. But that's an important one. More deprecated. Um, icon with the MD stream encoded settings. Default character set is now a UTF-8. Default value. Just some items that are deprecated, but check them out. Prepped. Um, I already noticed that there's no salt for you. There you go. There's no salt. Is there salt? It's a, you get a warning if you have some salt. <laughs> just a moment. It's a different type of salt. <laughs> just notify you. You pump that up. Uh, so there's an example of calling Prepped with something. Without passing a, a salt in, PHP 5.5, you get stuff. PHP 5.6, you get a nice thing to pass We were pretty quick to the new, we were deprecating all the stuff and spending more time with the newer stuff. Um, change functionality, substir compare, you can now like, choose zero for its length, or apparently you got green faults. I don't think I've ever tried that one before. 
I've always had a lot of super edge juices. Yeah. And there'll be some in the world that gets bit by them. <laughs> but they'll be okay because the fault is equal to zero, right? <laughs> Unless they're <definitely> <laughs> identical. Somewhere there's somebody who's going to spend months trying to figure out where to go. That could be a tricky one. Not that it's different. This has changed functionality. Um, Unserialize, they'll fail if you try to tamper with the trying to get around them, uh, trying to instantiate them. Um, curl, they want to use that file, which is profile. Encrypt, uh, default source value. Uh, we won't go too much into these. Uh, so there's a Postgres the functions that we used to be used experimental, like uh, PD insert, update, etc. et cetera, that are no longer experimental. They're now in production. Um, you send no longer block, no blocking. Uh, they have a, things like the parallel transactions you can do now. Um, so they, they did some changes in there. Uh, reflection class. Uh, final the classes that next one where you're introduced just make it be in what the next one where you're new features uh, or sorry new functions we'll get more new features um, which will put some of the new functions these are the ones I'm not going to show them just kind of you know some GMP LDAP my SQL there's a open SSL a bunch of changes as I mentioned I'm not sure what spawn all the openness cell changes. I'm suspicious that there's you know, some security issues there in the past year or two. Um, but uh, they have a bunch of new ways to verify concerns and stuff. And of course, of course, of course, verification. As I mentioned, Postgres, uh, this one of the things, PGL Postgres is it. It's archived, so the password. New stuff. This, we're going to do the fun stuff now. Um, Constant scalar expressions. So this is, you have a constant in a class, right? Uh, you go and you want to set it to something. <coughs> you want to use another constant for the <coughs> constant. Like this, we have the uh, you know, plus or string concatenation or something like that. Uh, PHP 5.5, 5, you cannot do that. PHP 5.6, you can now. So you now you have uh, 15 plus 5 is 20. You can go and change those and use those. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, let me know. We, I, have a, I have the VMs up and running, so we can get it, open these up and mess around with them. Uh, Variadic functions. Am I saying that right? Variadic? It's very negative. Variadic. Um, the, uh, the dot 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 notation and then the variable name over there. You may be familiar if you're using some uh, built in PHP functions like the you know, like array merge, for example, and you want behind the scenes that can be like a variety of function. And now you can go and declare those uh, before, to already name what you used to have to do before if you pass an extra variable. <laughs> So this, this takes care of that. You don't have to use funk data arcs and fill it. I'm not sure. So those numbers just come back as an array inside. Yes. You probably have it down at the bottom. Yeah, so so down here, I keep going. So I have Fibonacci numbers. Oh, the a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's on the left side. So OK. And then if I do a word on the X, it comes in as an array and a string. As a note, you can. Uh, Type hint on that. So if you have a class name or one of the force arrays coming in or whatever, you can put that in front of the dot 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 and of course the uh type in the that course of memory primary that goes in individually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of the nice things is that it helps yeah. when you're reading code that is that there's an expectation of all oh, when it passes an extra parameter, just like kind of, that's like that's the use of the function. Whereas before you'd always see people call like Get fun cards and do all kind of that. Like you would manually do all of that, but it was like, you yeah, have to read the file and kind of understand what it's doing. The variable this is very declarative, <coughs> saying, "Oh, here are the normal values I pass in, and then I can pass in this array of stuff." So 
this makes it easier to read that from one line to the tens. Like this function is expecting multiple values. Is that, that's one thing that I see. Is that the case way. or are you, you can, it, is it still considered optional to pass in any variable past the Last one you know, off, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's see. It goes and dumps the. Uh, and turn over. So I just check one exit. Oh no! Yeah, your last one, one passes in the first two bit off the right. variable arguments. Or the arguments, and it still gets the arguments. Okay. Those are called splats, right? <laughs> no, no, there's no one can open splats. Splats. There's two. Yeah. There you go. I'm sorry, I couldn't see the results. Go, so <laughs> it was good. It's over here a little bit. Huh? Even your internal compilers in your brain is not good for you. Not <laughs> since I've never worked with variadic functions. No. <laughs> well, you probably have an upgrade yet. Too You don't run five six in production. Uh, yeah, no, it is mine. <laughs> Please don't run five six in production. Please, if you want. You run the tests. You run the tests. It'll be good, right? <laughs> We will be getting how you can do a make test on PHP by the way. Yeah. So, variadic functions, let's say variadic functions. Um, this kind of those are super, really cool, but I don't think we use it very much. But like, like when I just made a good point, it lets you know that you're expecting additional variables there. Rather than just have to look for a bunk in orgs or a code development that has any bunk in orgs. It's one of those things that when you need it, you really like it. Right. <laughs> but most of the time you don't need it. Right. And if you think you need it, you probably don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> Just like, I mean, you might, but you know. is there a use case where you use that as opposed to using just a variable? Yeah. I mean it's basically like a like if you're doing something crypt up style or you know, you know, where you yeah, don't know how many arguments you're going to get. I think it's more about cleaning up your API yeah, design than anything else. It's, it's easier to read it for people who are calling your method that takes a very long time. You're not getting you can do that with fun get arms, but maybe your, this is cleaner than people. Your documentation generators probably can more easily figure out mm -hmm. what the yeah. right. just works. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. <coughs> Yeah, but the one thing is, I really like those is that you have to type in the and stuff and then yeah. to find it out, of course. Mm -hmm. so you're expecting strings to be an object and you're going to keep them whatever. Yeah. The other thing is that right now you can send, you can always pass too many parameters and it won't be quite. I'd imagine in the future, though. Once people, option. yeah, turn on an option. Well, they'll deprecate that eventually. Once so they have people to time to to fix their code to do this yeah. instead. PHP eight. They'll get rid of fun <laughs> head arts. Why do PHP will have a failure branch? <laughs> Just odd numbers from now on. I don't know. The no, I bet if they did anything <laughs> with it, they would just add in like an optional. Yeah. Um, this is a splat. Okay. Um, it's the uh, splat here. Um, your class splat uh, gets lots of arguments, right? Regarding on those, you know, a bunch of stuff. Um, the splat is kind of the opposite way where you pass it into the method. So you can pass it in an array or uh, just implement an iterator. So you, as you know, the, the great example here, but uh, so passing those, those variables, instead of having to go type out all those, if you want to pass them one by one, so then pass them all the different main keys or something, or, or you can just do a, a splat, and it'll chop those, I guess, makes sense, chop those variables out before you come out. So alligators A, B, C, D, E, Um, 
Yeah, I think a lot of really good examples for this. Yeah. Other than some, just some cleaner, cleaner code. Yeah, if you have a if you have something you want to smash together, splat. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We define the splat framework, but it's a term used in some uh, other languages. Julia has it for Python. Chefs, right? Uh, the the I was thinking. You can do that with Python. Oh, when I start did start for it, start for it. Yeah. Well, then you uh, pass it with a splat, don't you? You can pass a function with the. Um, why can't I think of what it's called? Star star. Just the star, I think, right? Can't you pass it with just the star and it splats it out like the three dots? Or does it have to be star star? Uh, star star. For, sorry. Time. So star star is for keyword record. Yeah. For dictionaries and for lists, it's a start, right? So, okay. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, with that second example, the spot variant, it actually treats it as an array of strings? No, so it passes it, the second one, the second argument is variadic, so it splats it out like a whole bunch of arguments. The, and so the, the they the get function, shoved in that. The variadic. function is actually pulling the main ones in the whole. Oh. Okay. So, it's kind of right, it's going to use a splat very eye. So you're passing it as an array and taking it in as an array. Because before you'd actually have to call them out. You'd have to call a user arcs. call func arg and, and, yeah. and use it to call in dynamic. Which is, is probably even worse than using func get arcs. Yeah. As far as trying to generate your right. list of arguments. And the term splat operator comes from the engine, it actually refers to both of what these are, both the, you know, this feature and very high feature. <laughs> so that's the right 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 How is this well, different than the very high? One's going in, one's coming in, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so variadic functions accept put the function arguments into an array as you accept them, and the, the splat is letting you pass the array as separate arguments. Yeah, so if you look at pass and then the lots of arguments, that array gets applied as each argument. So the first item is A, the second item is B, the third item is C, the fourth item is D. But you only have to pass in one variable instead of using all your keys and everything. Joseph's been trying to get that for how long now? PHP and Lasso. And Lasso has their, that's all they use is named parameters, oh. basically. And it's really nice because you just declare a parameter as either optional or required. And then you can choose which parameters are put in. You don't have to worry about passing any nulls or falses or anything like that in order to keep your signature correct. It's really nice. Yeah. There's hope. <laughs> One day, these will have new browsers and first they We can talk more about that at the time. One thing with these features, though, <laughs> like I mentioned, these are really, really nice to have when you really need them. Um, but it also, when you get to a bigger code base, they start to become a liability because it makes it a lot harder to test. Weird bugs pop up because you have these variable number of things, and so it's hard to know. You know, are you getting the oh, right? The nice things? thing about this is before <coughs> you had, as far as being able to compile, I think a lot of these features are being driven by um, hip hop hack, whether it's called the HHPA, mm -hmm. um, JRT. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, this is more, you can tell, at least this is declared that it's a variable number of arguments. So it's actually declared in the function definition instead of being able to pass random arguments. You can't right. verify 
right now you can pass more arguments than the function accepts. And that's valid. It allows for better static typing. Yeah, so you can now you can you can say, you know what, that function only has two arguments and you're passing in three. Stick so, right. right. That, 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 that's great, definitely. And so but if you're using <coughs> heavily then Right. But yeah, you shouldn't be doing a lot of so yeah, like like in salt, we did we did some Python a lot. We did this all over the salt, but then as coders grew, um, became unwieldy to test all the different things, we get unexpected things. So we backed it down to where it actually is really really useful, and, and, and stripped out the variable stuff. I mean, the only really place good. I can think of that I use it in my code base is um, with the, my wrapper class for. MySQL prepared statements, and so you're passing in a variable number of arguments based on, I mean, it's basically a printf kind of mm -hmm. sort of syntax, and so, yeah. but it's, it's not something we use uh, most of the time. Yeah. Oh, cool. It can get easy to like, start relying on it. Please don't go make methods where every single parameter test is uh, a <coughs> periodic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does PHP guarantee the order of those? The bit the order of the test? I think it would. Yeah. 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 Same with the splat. You know, well, the you, it's, you, it's whatever the whatever they arrange it. Whatever they order the order array. Or your keys in. Yeah, but does the PHP say that the order of the array is never guaranteed? No. Uh -huh. It is. Sort it. Well, if you do sorting and stuff on it, then. Well, if you have to know it's associated with it, then it's not. I think it's said not to rely on that thing. No, if you're yeah. using an array like that, it's a little I know it always has been. But yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always a little bit. I don't know if it's just a straight array. For example, uh, <coughs> star star for exponentiation now, you can also do a star star equals to uh, uh, for exponentiation. <coughs> for example, we should call that one. Um, I, as I was explaining, it's nice. Um, it may throw people off the star star initiative. Super multiplier. Initially, in the, the older version, it had all these errors and stuff, but they, they, they upgraded and they had PHP 5.6 and that really didn't I just noticed that they were changing like this and they had a bunch of devices, so. Yeah, they just fixed that 4.5.6 support now. <coughs> Other than that, for the least functions, it's not. Yeah. Catch. Uploading, uploading, file, 
go to the two gig. I'm not going to demo that with guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to that one with guys. Try that one at home. <laughs> Try to blow a Ruby or a OS or something. OS. <laughs> or Nike's catalog feed. Ugh. Is there a new limitation on that or is it just unlimited? I didn't see a limit. There might be a limit. As far as the system specifically. Yeah. Mass, probably. Yeah. Or your OS system system system. System. You can set a bag. It's bound by address space now. <laughs> so two gig, so four gigs is an unsigned manager, or sixty-four bit, right? With a thirty bit, yeah, so two gigs are unsigned. <coughs> so they probably have just a constant in there. They were using that they now just changed to whatever the last yeah. space of the system is. I'm not sure if you ever have for to be bothered. So Dropbox is for it, but you know. Well, I had, so I had a project where they would have liked that. Uh, when I was at BYU, they, I was working with the business department, and especially the marketing team, they wanted <coughs> to have, they wanted an app where they just download a video, go to any of their classrooms and just show the video. But they wanted it to be private. They didn't want to use any that they wanted to be in house thing. Oh, right. So they they would have liked something. They would have liked people who would have talked to party too. I'd like that. I think that's that's not what you're doing for WordPress for that same reason. Yeah. So it's, well, it's, you know, we had the same issue from Desert Hills and tell people, hey, the things are custom in house and we do stuff. You have to handle break your uh, videos to speed up. Certain settings to get the file size down. Oh, it's like, hey, here's a 10 gig file. Yeah, yeah. you process it. <laughs> Our little VMs. I think I upload a, a, a two hour, four day video, right? Yeah. Two hour on house debate or something. It's like, it <laughs> <laughs> and it's huge. <coughs> cool. GMP, as I mentioned, uh, it now supports operating overloading. Um, so now you can do here's the exponentiation uh, plus plus. Um, and uh, didn't have that right. Do you have the phone right? Um, yeah, I did. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. So, Example. What's GMP again, Matt? It's the, uh, the mass library. It's, yeah, it's the floating point one for the mm -hmm. where they, uh, yeah. There's also. Is it the MC map? Or? Yeah. So there's one that's mm -hmm. integers. <coughs> this is the floating point one. Yeah, it's just the integer. Has anyone actually used GMP? I used it. You basically needed super, super long integers. Yeah, and so you had to do like GMP underscore add and then pass the two arguments and GMP underscore mult. Yeah. Or, you know, if you wanted to, if you were, I had to use it for some, I don't know what it was, it was some, it might have been some kind of like hash function or something I was writing for. <coughs> something like that. It was some like demo thing I was doing. Like, some some kind of crazy thing I was doing that needed huge things and you had to do call functions instead of just something like it, it does make more sense. Um, the next one hash equals uh, it's a timing attack same one. Uh, so the timing will always take the same one. You see, there's a couple examples there where it's just uh, asking good and bad. But if you were to iterate or run a million times, you'd see it's come out the same time. 
One thing they point out is that the order of the parameters is important. We want the known one to be first. I think you're is that right? Uh, they, they specify in there with the, uh, in order to get actual, to have it be at uh, the same time, you have to have the set right order of parameters. Otherwise, it will not be time and safe. Magic method. Look at the old magic methods. Missile. <laughs> Just too many. <coughs> magic missile is over there. Yeah, they just yeah, said, yeah, distract them. Destroy them. Throw away the big jackets. Did you say get and set? Yeah. Call. Call. Um, destroy. Is there a boat? Yeah, we just destroy. 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 Which is never part of the expected. <laughs> uh, now you're doing uh, Debug Info. I actually tried this one a whole bunch. I actually couldn't get it to hit. I don't think that was something that was going to bug my code. But I couldn't actually get it to hit. You guys can see any issues with it. I don't see any issues with it, but uh, uh, you can copy paste the example and go from the that didn't work either. So I don't know if it's a, <laughs> if it was a bad build or not, or I don't know. I couldn't get to work with it. What they say is going to happen is that you can, <laughs> if you call the debug, it would output something that you want to tap or whatever you want to whatever, whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. It's hard to learn to try to Apparently. Well, I mean, if you're, you're, show, you're giving it that doesn't mean right, but right. So it didn't actually work, so I didn't <coughs> notice it doesn't have the uh, Sure. Uh, typically, I don't know, debug info. Like, I guess you could use it if you want to uh, run your test up against it on that bit or something. Or perhaps the debugging question is what it infers is debugging something. Or it doesn't come out of it, you don't really want to have to know. Is it, are you supposed to return a stream? Is that what the problem is? You can return anything you can. Yeah. Or debug info? Yeah. Debug method, uh, debug info. I wonder if they said second here with the next debug or inspections and stuff like that. Can I get to the end here? Uh, as mentioned, uh, PHP QA, uh, if, you, if you have never done it, it's, just, it's good uh, kind of power to exercise. Kind of um, you can uh, pull down the builds that they have. Uh, these are the, the example commands you execute uh, wget. Uh, that was the most recent one as this morning, uh, 5.6.1 or something. Um, Tart, change, go to the directory, dump configure, make test. Uh, builds and spews out a whole bunch of stuff. Give yourself like 20 minutes um, to go run it. I've had some issues running up from VMs. It always works with just a straight Linux distro. You just box and read. I think some issues with the uh, some games. Um, they also look for help to write test cases and do three teams over time. I've never done any of those ones, but just kind of put it out there if you want to do that stuff. Um, here's an example of a configure the main test that ran. This is why I ran the end there, submit it, and build off. But the nice thing about that is if you have barbs that are kind of unique, you can have some kind of like moms that can be testing with different things. It's a nice thing about that. Which means you're no longer old solar servers. You come back and say, sorry, I'm so old. <laughs> Any you want to try out 5.6? I'm confused about how they're handling the uh, characters. Uh, they had 8-bit uh, characters and then a multi-byte string and traditionally. And where did they go from there? Is everything like UTF-8 or what? Uh, the UTF-8 is the 
default value now of 536 Are they addressing, um, I think there's some accented characters in <coughs> UTF-8 that have two valid representations. So, are you familiar with that? Anybody else? Yeah, that <laughs> okay. So basically, no more of the MD functions. No I think they'll. Uh, we'll, I think they'll still keep the multi-byte functions. Yeah. Obviously, so we can get this off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nearly as much. We don't figure out. Yeah, but there's a lot of multi-byte <laughs> character encodings you can use that are not here today. Yeah. I don't have a ton of experience in it. I have more experience than I ever wanted putting these <laughs> characters in the PDF. <laughs> None of that was designed to work. <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah. Those are the deprecated questions. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's the, specifically the HTTP input, HTTP output. It is a string, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but by saying that it's reusable, whereas before you couldn't open it twice, mm -hmm. now you can open it twice, but where does it open it the second time? Right. When you open it, it starts. Yeah, yeah when, when you, you open it, it back to the beginning. That, that, that current sort of opened so. session. And so that file pointer that you open it. Yeah, it is. The file pointers can be a different one. Okay, but uh, what about if it's using standard in? Then they both receive her once it came back into scope, it would pick up where it left off. I mean, like, if you called into a function, well, that was not standard in. That's what you can use. You can use that on the CLI to grab the standard in. I think. I thought you used something else. It's not PHP input, though. It sounds like they have some testing. <laughs> so experimentation. On a block list. You can do, you don't have to have open standard in, you can just use, there's a file pointer that's already open for standard in. Okay. I think it's just all caps standard in. So you need. We'll have to go check out the documentation. We'll have to go read the Five, six, no longer says like global value variable. 
you didn't post anything, so you don't know whether it actually did. Yeah. Uh, I get this. It's not the same thing. Oh, so it's each we stand to be in. That's cool now. It's the other huge part. This one for him, so it is only for folks who are So you, you mentioned that WordPress. So do you know what Mary is about? I don't know. It was a, just a general test of the benchmark. So what? So is that PHP 7? Yeah. Uh, yeah. PHP 7. PHP 7, the, the, the NG branch. Um, um, oh, I can't remember the, the, the Zen guys, the Andre and the yeah. yeah, two Zen guys who went in. Because after HHVM came out with all their stuff, um, they went in there for a while and thought we could uh, gain a lot of the same performance, you know, go over there and then try to gain the similar performance. And so, I suppose they did that, and we called it PHP and G branch, and then they had a vote to say, should we merge that into the next major release of PHP? And I think that passed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a, so that passed. There's a lot of drama over it. Some of the people have been sort of. Not <laughs> How is that not a no-brainer? Like, yeah. There's a lot of politics about the energy. We can have presentations yeah, just so on the so drama. There's, there's a lot of politics about that. That would be actually be kind of interesting. <laughs> what we should do is we should go get a graph database and input all the voting data. And all like the comments. Have it, have it parse the uh, like the topics in, in, the, in the mailing list and the negative and positive reactions or whatever, and, and graph that all out and say, hey, here's here's a you know political map of the internals list. <laughs> <laughs> what you should be able to do is pick a topic, you know, like you're going to propose a new one, and see who's going to vote say, for it. And say, I can tell you, and then go, you know, sweet talk them to push it through for you. Yeah. Well, it depends who proposes it. That's right. Who will vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd start a new uh, Nate Silver block for PHP internals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, <coughs> that, that looks like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, there's there's been internals is interesting. I, I tend to subscribe to it. It goes into a label or a tag, whatever they call it, in Google. You know. I look at it once. And once when I save up 10,000 messages in it. Once we'll find one with lots of replies and then we'll scroll down and I'm like, man, it's amazing just how much uh, stuff. This one, there's a lot of debate on this one too. Because in theory, there's it would change, if you did some really, really work PHP stuff, it would change the functionality of like, you know, if you ran, I think, I think in RFC they list a couple of Use cases saying, you know, yeah, they do. They, they go into kind of detail. He's saying, if you did this in the previous yeah. version, it's going to change the response. And a lot of people say, we can't do that. And other people say, well, if your PHP looks like this, I'll be <laughs> off. You need help anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in, in a perfect world, if you had all your unit tests written, you could just run your unit test against the, whatever, the next version of PHP. And, it's all sorts of fun things. If you have abstraction and stuff, then you might use it. And if you have the yeah, anticipated order, you can finish it. There's no way to know that. Yeah, yeah backward compatibility changes. Yeah, old meeting versus yeah. new meeting. <coughs> no, I didn't. Who's that? Scroll back. Where is that? I guess. Some of these backward compatibility changes, too, where it's like, I'm like, I didn't think you were right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't know the compiler can compile that. That's fantastic. That's fascinating. Anyway, you gotta go code like that. Just <laughs> and it's simply it's like a third or fourth nested stuff. Back in the case before days, it never worked for well, so I just shied away from it. Yeah. So, I don't 
that the vote was funny in it. Derek was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I read his well, water, right? It's Derek. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the nicest thing to do for. He's the but. nicest person in the world in person. He's really nice. Oh, he's extremely nice if you're not talking about him. Well, if you're talking in terms of limited person, he's not too bad. But somehow. Did you want to talk about the huh? possible Christmas party? Uh, yeah, we can run the party. Just, so typically in the past, we can take a vote. <laughs> Bears would vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> so typically in the past, we canceled the December meeting because th Thursday is normally running into you know holiday-ish and like people are busy with family get together or not. Um, but uh, in Austin, what they do is they have all the user groups cancel the December meeting, and earlier in the month they'll have a Christmas party for families and stuff with all the user groups coming together. And so I was thinking about reaching out to the user groups and seeing if they want to do that um, in December and we'll find a sponsor or whatever. So is, is, are people here who'd be interested in that in December text Christmas party? Could the Drupal group make some the fourth version of it? Yeah. And so, is it what it is? User yeah. groups will cancel their meetings that month because they're busy anyway. anyway. And then we'll, we'll just do one meeting for all the user groups, which is the first part. At the Waffle House. <laughs> no, <laughs> at the Belgian Waffle House. Everybody will fit. We have quite we a few people there. <laughs> we could do that. Oh, They'd probably get Jared to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Blue House. Yeah, well, no, Bluehost could host the. Well, Bluehost yeah. just. And Jared just emailed me saying they wanted to do more for the user groups. Oh, perfect. So, All right, I'll. I'll so. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Since you'll probably be the one doing it. As long as he has to get an email saying, Since he's hey, never we're here, cutting your budget. <laughs> we're cutting your. Uh, Giving a salary decrease because we have to pay for the waffles. He's <laughs> <laughs> fine. He sent me a company card this time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just remember. Yeah, oh, oh, I think. Oh, yeah, you, you did. did. Yeah, he paid for it. I just remember. Eventually. I just remember eventually. Eventually. Was talking with Steve, and I'm like, yeah, earlier, he's like, yeah, he's paying for it. And I'm there, and Steve was already seeing, and I'm just like, I think it's the math in my head. I'm like, I should have enough for my card. <laughs> my wife thought we'd be very too happy. Like, well, didn't I have like someone had a way airplane? Or yep, and I went and got him. And was like, you know, Adam Cole, bald dude. Well, I got the waves because of you were grabbing else. other people, yeah. and then you went to grab. You both <laughs> nominated me. To, that was my only. Yeah, that was fair. I had never done. I didn't do any other airplane airport runs. So. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's go to Apple News. Okay. All right. I, Ex a, oh, go ahead. I got emails. I don't know if anyone said there's like Utah Tech Week in a few weeks. Yeah. Like a hackathon stuff. Yeah. I've seen something. Yeah. I think the email they asked me to mention it. I'll go find the email and I'll forward it to the user group. Well, he mentioned it. So. Yeah. Well, those who aren't here. <coughs> it just reminded me because they have like, the first day of party and there's a hackathon. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's awesome. <coughs> Thank you. That was really yeah. good. <laughs> now we should have competition to see. After we feel comfortable with the, the, the release of 5.6, five, uh, five, see who can, get up, who can upgrade first. 5.6. <laughs> have you, who's last? Actually, I don't know who's going to be last. Probably be Actually, just yeah, barely. Uh, as soon as we get up with 5.3, we can go as far as we want. I just barely actually today moved a couple servers over from 5.3 to 5.5. The jump from 5.3 to 5.4 is really the painful one. 5.4 to 5.5 is like... Well, see, and I think because of that, issue. a lot of people are doing what he was saying. I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're just doing 5.3 to 5.5. Well, my only issue when... I, I put out 5.5 for a while because I was using APC and I didn't want to uh, deal with making sure I got my... I and I options, right? And, and I think I stopped so, that one. I mean, that was wasn't moving that wasn't huge. customers from five two to five four. <laughs> that one was ugly. <coughs> Do you have any customers on four still? On four? Uh, I think.
think in one of the offshoot brands, not what about us on the rest but one of the offshoot brands does have uh, four somewhere. What is Bluehost doing right now? Uh, now Bluehost, Bluehost only has, they, we totally actually removed the options for 5.3. You can't even use 5.3 on the shared server anymore. So there's still a 5.2 option there for the customers that we didn't move off of 5.2, because there's still a large portion of those. Um, but now it's 5.4 and 5.5, and I don't know what 5.6 does. <coughs> Does, does Travis yet have a 5.6 build? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, they've had that one for a while. Yeah. The cool thing is if, like, so if you use Travis CI or any, any of those things, you can already start having the unit test run against a 5.6 environment. But I haven't pushed it to your environment. They had some services. Well, to choose some of that 5.3. Nobody know about that, please.